This video is going to take a look at a preview of working in two dimensions and three dimensions and taking derivatives. Thus far, we've only taken derivatives in the x direction, where we've got a coordinate plane in two dimensions. But uh, we can extend that to a three-dimensional coordinate plane and still work with derivatives. The trick is we have to decide what direction we're going in. So the question is going to be, how do we calculate derivatives in 3D? Now, a 3D function, uh, generally a 2D function is f of x. We've done a lot of work with that because we just take the derivative with response to f of x, with, with respect to x. But a three-dimensional function will have variables x and y in them to result in a z variable that's a solution. So these are still a function. We've just got multiple variables inside the function. And the way we take those derivatives is we take what is called a partial derivative, or a derivative or rate of change in a specific direction. In other words, are we going left and right? Are we going forwards and backwards? How far are we changing in each of these two directions? And so to specify that we're just taking a derivative partially in one direction, we've got a special notation to indicate this. You will see what we call the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And I'll even write that. That's the partial derivative in the x direction. And you might think about that as the left-right direction loosely. And it's kind of this funky df dx that we saw before. But now, because it's got this curved looking d, that notation should tell us we're talking about a partial derivative in the x direction. And similarly, you'll see a partial derivative with respect to y. That's the partial derivative in the y direction, or how fast we're changing in the y direction, which you might think of loosely as the up-down direction. And by up-down, I mean if I'm looking down at a piece of paper uh, away from me and towards me, up-down, or left-right would be the other two directions. So how are we changing left and right? How are we changing horizontally as we've got a partial change of the function? And the way we actually calculate a partial derivative is we treat all other variables as constants. So for example, let's say we've got f of xy is equal to 3x squared y to the fourth. And if I wanted to calculate the partial of f with respect to x in the x direction, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x, and we're going to pretend the y is a constant. So the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. And the y to the fourth is a constant. So it's going to kind of hang out like constants do when they're multiplied by our x. I could also take the derivative of this same function with respect to the y. In that case, we take the derivative of the y, which is y cubed. And then we bring the 4 out front. 4 times 3 is 12. 
and we keep the x squared as if it was a constant, as if it was part of the 3. Really important here to note, though, that the notation and process is different than implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation used that whole dy dx. With dy dx, y was a function of x in two dimensions. y was f of x. Now we've got a three-dimensional function that has x's and y's in the function, but these are functions. These pass the vertical line test, or in three dimensions, the vertical plane test. With implicit differentiation, we took the derivative of y as if it was a function of x and then multiplied by its derivative dy dx. That is different than partial derivatives, where we're just going in the x direction in three dimensions and the y is treated like a constant. Or we're going in the y direction, and the x is treated as a constant. Be careful not to mix these two processes, because they are very different. So let's try a few examples, though, where we have to take a bunch of partials. What's nice about these partial derivatives is it's a great place for us to synthesize all the derivative rules that we have seen up to this point and see how we do. So let's first take a function in x and y. Uh, let's call it 5x squared minus 7xy minus 9y to the fifth plus 2x minus 7y plus 3. And first, we'll find the partial of f with respect to x. So we're going to pretend like all the y's are constants as we take the derivative with respect to x. So our first term, we know that's 10x, minus the derivative of x is 1. So we're just left with the constants 7 and y. The 9y to the fifth. Those are all constants. And the derivative of just a constant is 0, so that term's gone. 2x, the derivative of that is just 2. Again, the 7y, all constant. The 3, constant. Therefore, those derivatives are also 0. And so our partial derivative of f with respect to x is 10x minus 7y plus 2. We can also take the partial derivative of f with respect to the y. With respect to the y, the 5x squared is now a constant, so that's 0. Negative 7xy, the derivative of the y is 1, so we're just left with the constant 7x. The derivative of negative 9y to the fifth is negative 45y to the fourth, bringing that 5 out front and dropping the exponent by 1. 2x, it's all constant. The derivative of negative 7y is negative 7. And 3 is also a constant, so that derivative is 0. And now we've got our partial derivatives with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. Let's try another one. We'll increase in complexity here, making these more interesting. Function of f with respect to x and y. The function of f with x and y as variables is the secant of x to the fourth y plus 7x minus 4y. And now the partial of f with respect to x. Here we've got a chain rule set up. We've got a secant of stuff. The derivative of secant is secant tangent of the stuff. So the secant of x to the fourth y plus 7x minus 4y tangent of the stuff, which is x to the fourth y plus 7x minus 4y 
times the derivative of the stuff inside it with respect to x. So the x to the fourth becomes 4x four cubed with the constant of y still there, plus the derivative of 7x is just 7. Negative 4y, those are all constants because we treat the y as a constant. So it's 0. And now we've got our partial derivative of f with respect to x. Let's try the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Very similar chain rule again. The derivative of secant is still the secant tangent of the stuff. So we have the secant of x to the fourth y plus 7x minus 4y tangent of x to the fourth y plus 7x minus 4y times the derivative of the inside stuff with respect to y. So now, with the x to the fourth y, the y, the derivative of y, is just 1. So we're left with the constant x to the fourth. 7x doesn't have any y's on it. So that goes to 0. And the derivative of negative 4y is negative 4. And now we've got the derivative, the partial derivative, with respect to y. Let's make this a little more interesting. Let's say f is a function of x and y, which is equal to e to the xy cosine of 2x sine of 3y. And if we want the partial of f with respect to x, here we've got a product. With respect to x, the sine of 3y is a constant. So really, the only product is e to the xy times the cosine of 2x. And then we will have that constant out in front. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that constant in front. The sine of 3y times the derivative of e to the xy is e to the xy times the derivative of the inside with respect to x is just y, times the second part, which is the cosine of 2x, plus the derivative of the second part. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So let's make that negative sine of 2x times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. And let's go ahead and put that 2 actually in front of the sign, just to keep it clean times the other part, e to the xy. And we've got our partial derivative with respect to x. Let's also do the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Very similarly, but this time, notice the factor of cosine of 2x does not have any y's on it. That is a constant that's being multiplied by stuff with y's. So that constant will put out front cosine of 2x times the derivative of the product. So our product is multiplying e to the xy times the sine of 3y. So we'll take the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first, all the partial with respect to y. So the derivative of e to the xy is e to the xy times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of xy with respect to y is just x times the second part, which is the sine of 3y, plus the derivative of the second part. The derivative of sine is the cosine of 3y times the derivative of the inside, which is a 3, times the first part, e to the xy. And we have our derivative. 
Let's try one last example. f is a function of x and y. It's equal to the tangent of x to the fourth, y to the third, times the natural log of 5 over xy. Now, something to make life easier, you should be very good at picking up now. When we see a fraction like 5 over xy, we can think about that as 5x to the negative 1, y to the negative 1. Because that's going to be easier to take the derivative of. So as we take the derivative, that's the natural log of 5x to the negative 1, y to the negative 1. And first, we're going to do the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And again, we have a product rule. And each product part is going to be a chain rule. So there's going to be a couple pieces to this one. First, the derivative of the first times the second. The derivative of tangent is secant squared of the stuff. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to x. So the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. And the y cubed is a constant. Times the natural log of 5x to the negative 1, y to the negative 1, plus the derivative of the second. The derivative of natural log is 1 over the stuff. 5x to the negative 1, y to the negative 1, times the derivative of the inside with respect to x, which is going to be negative 5x to the negative 2, bringing the negative 1 out front, subtracting 1, and the y to the negative 1 is a constant, times the tangent of x to the fourth y cubed times the first part. A little bit to clean up. Let's move the 4x cubed y cubed to the front. Also, the 5 over 5 reduces out. The y to the negative 1s reduce out, which is really nice. And so we're just left with an x to the, when I move the negative 2 down, it's going to be just a negative or a positive 1 left over. So cleaning that up, we get 4x cubed y cubed secant squared of x to the fourth y cubed natural log of, let's go ahead and make this a fraction, 5 over xy plus we've got the tangent of x cubed, or I'm sorry, x to the fourth y cubed. And all that's left from that ugly fraction we crossed everything out is just an x in the denominator. And now we've got our partial derivative with respect to x. Let's do the partial derivative with respect to y. It's going to be very similar because x and y appear in very similar locations. But just to walk through it together. Uh, product rule again. So first, the derivative of tangent is secant squared of the stuff, x to the fourth, y cubed, times the derivative of the inside, this time with respect to y. In the y direction is 3y squared. And the x to the fourth is a constant times the second part, which is the natural log of, I'll just leave it as 5 over xy, plus the derivative of the second part, which is natural log, is, the is 1 over the stuff, 1 over 5x to the negative 1, y to the negative 1, times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be y to the negative 2 with a negative 5 and an x to the negative 1, because an x is a constant, times the first part, which is tangent of x to the fourth y cubed. 
The cleanup is very similar. We'll move the 3x to the 4th y squared to the front. Uh, the 5s are going to divide out, which is nice. Oops, I just saw an error that I missed earlier. We had a minus, and my minus disappeared. And that should have been a minus on number 4. I apologize for that. Don't lose your signs. But the x to the negative 1s do divide out. And when we bring the y down, we'll just be left with a single y in the denominator. So for our cleaned up version, we have 3x to the fourth y squared, secant squared of x to the fourth y cubed, natural log of 5 over xy minus, because of the minus sign, not forgetting it this time, we'll put the tangent of x cubed x to the fourth y cubed in the numerator. And in the denominator, all that's left is a single y. And we have our partial derivative with respect to y. The homework assignment with partial derivatives is really short. But they are going to force you to review all of these derivative properties we've worked with here in chapter 3, which is what makes it such a great assignment. So take a look at it, give it a good practice, and then we will see you in class to discuss these partial derivatives in a little more detail.